Welcome to ForexTV.com's PM Exchange. It's Wednesday, December 19th. I'm Remy Hoki. Today I'm joined by David Powell from IDA Global. Good afternoon, David. Good afternoon, Remy. Thanks for coming on the show today. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, first of all, I'd like to start out by talking about weakness we've seen in the British currency. Uh, we saw sterling fall um, below the $2 mark in today's session, and this came on the heels of the BOE minutes, and we got a unanimous decision um, from the MPC. But were you surprised by this decision, and do you expect uh, further rate cuts um, going into January and February? Right, well, the decision was a bit surprising uh, that it was 9 to 0, mm -hmm. uh, completely in favor of the cut. Uh, according to market surveys, uh, the expectations range from 2 to 7 all the way to 5 to 4 and not really in the 9 to 0 range. Mm -hmm. And uh, this certainly did contribute to uh, weakness in the pound along with some data on weak uh, retail sales. And this certainly does point to further easing in the UK uh, in the first quarter of next year. Mm -hmm. In fact, we look for three uh, cuts of 75 basis points each in the first half of next year and a fourth in the second half as the uh, UK economy is really set to slow considerably in the aftermath of the credit crunch and the effect that that's had on the financial services uh, industry. Okay, well, um, discussing uh, the sterling against the majors, um, sterling uh, hit uh, a low, uh, below the $2 handle today. And also, as we end the uh, New York session, um, on the heels of dollar strength and also carry trade liquidation, we're seeing a continued weakness for the currency um, going into the close. But do you expect to see a correction in uh, sterling against the dollar? Uh, not really. Uh, the dollar short squeeze mm -hmm. uh, remains uh, in place right now, and the technical picture for the dollar does point to further gains for the dollar on a multi-day basis, mm -hmm. and uh, we look for the dollar to uh, continue its rally versus the British pound uh, and target the September uh, 18th low of 198.75 over the uh, next few sessions. Okay, and moving on to the um, euro against the U.S. currency, uh, we saw the pair hit a low of 130, uh, 143.26, but it's nearing the New York uh, close up uh, near the 143.80 level, and we're going to be seeing a continued uh, thin trading as we near year end, and also um, with year end buying. Um, if you could tell us how you see rate differentials um, for both the Fed and the ECB weighing on euro dollar. Sure. Uh, well, in terms of the price action of the remainder of this year, we do look uh, for the dollar's rally to remain in place on a multi-day basis, and that would have uh, the uh, euro dollar dropping towards support around 142.80, which is the uh, September 28th high. And uh, <coughs> in terms of interest rate differentials, they point to a stronger euro dollar in the first part of next year. In fact, we look for euro dollar to return to uh, the 150 level as the uh, Fed is uh, slated to cut uh, additionally in the first part of next year. We look for three cuts. The market's only pricing in uh, with full conviction one cut and leaning towards the second cut. Um, and in terms of the uh, ECB, uh, the, uh, the, the outlook is for fewer cuts. Uh, the uh, President of the ECB, Trichet, has been very hawkish uh, in his speeches, but uh, given the large liquidity the ECB is pumping into the mm -hmm. market, it doesn't look like they're going to hike. Uh, in other words, the ECB at this stage seems to be more bark than bite. Mm -hmm. And in fact, uh, there are, have been some preliminary signs of weakness in the Eurozone economy so far, and we look for the ECB to cut her once in June and uh, in September. However, those cuts are likely to come later. And, um, and not to be as deep as in the U.S. and therefore mm -hmm. feel that interest rate differentials will work towards strengthening euro dollar in the new year. Okay, and one currency pair I want to touch on is uh, the U.S. dollar against uh, the Japanese yen. Um, we had the BOJ meeting uh, this week, but um, going into 08, if you could tell us your expectations for the BOJ. And also one thing I do want to ask is, we've been seeing a decoupling um, in terms of price action for dollar-yen um, as opposed to um, the yen against the euro and sterling. So if you could briefly give us your take on what we've been seeing in recent sessions. 
Right. Uh, well, uh, many people have spoken of the mm -hmm. correlation that's seen between equity market performance and the yen, which does seem uh, present on certain days, especially when there are significant gains or losses in the U.S. equity markets. But if you look over a longer time span, such as since the beginning of the month, uh, dollar yen has uh, has slowly climbed higher along with the dollar's rally across the board, while U.S. equity markets, for example, are down on the month. And we expect uh, on a multi-day basis for this uh, trend to continue, in other words, yen weakness versus the dollar uh, moving towards 114 and probably 115 uh, before year end. However, in terms of a uh, longer, uh, longer term outlook, uh, interest rate differentials um, are set to uh, are set to not 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 favor the yen in other words the e the boj is will likely remain on hold when it makes its announcement on thursday is universally expected to do so and pretty much throughout the remainder or throughout the entire year of 2008 as the domestic economy in japan really is not allowing the boj boj to normalize uh, monetary policy to any great extent as such we look for the uh, carry trade to return in the second half of 2008. However, uh, with uh, increased levels of volatility in the first half, we do look for some yen strengthening and believe that uh, the majority of the first half of the new year will see dollar yen below 110 uh, without a real recovery for dollar yen uh, above that level until the second half after we pass the short squeeze in the dollar that we're experiencing right now. Okay, and last but not least, I'd like to uh, touch on a uh, dollar against the CAD. Um, the pair saw a low today at 1018, and we did get a surprise uh, rate cut from the BOC. Um, but looking at volatility in CAD, what's your forecast for the CAD against both the dollar and the yen? Right, well, uh, in terms of the Canadian dollar mm -hmm. uh, versus the U.S. dollar, the pair seems to be uh, in a bit of a range right now. Uh, the dollar, the Canadian dollar, has fallen out of favor um, that it previously uh, that it previously experienced uh, with the onset of the monetary U-turn that we saw from the Bank of Canada, and uh, we do not believe that the the Canadian dollar returned to the high levels we saw a few weeks ago. And uh, in the short term, it seems to be caught in between a range of about parity to 102. And even over the uh, longer term, such as the next several months, we do look for the, uh, the uh, Canadian dollar to weaken slightly, but not too much, uh, maybe towards the 103 by the end of the first quarter. Um, in other words, uh, we see that pair is close to appropriately valued at the present moment in time. And, uh, we base that on the uh, Bank of Canada's exchange rate model that we ourselves have replicated, and uh, it seems that uh, that will not be one of the big movers mm -hmm. of the uh, new year. However, in terms of CAD yen, uh, we could uh, see um, some uh, some fall there as we do look for the yen uh, to strengthen in the uh, first part of next year as the uh, increases in volatility that we've seen uh, leads to some uh, leads to some uh, closing of carry trades. Um, but like I said, well, that effect will probably dissipate in the second half of next year. Okay, David, as always, thank you very much for coming on the show. Pleasure to be here. This has been your Forex News with David Powell from IDA Global. Next up, we have your equities and commodities wrap-up for the day. U.S. stocks saw another volatile day of trading. Wall Street grappled with a worsening outlook for bond insurers as well as the $9.4 billion write-down at Morgan Stanley. Meanwhile, the weakening economy remains a top concern as the market weighs recession fears. Morgan Stanley managed to receive a $5 billion investment from a Chinese sovereign wealth fund, while the Federal Reserve said its auction of $20 billion in 28-day credit was met with strong demand. At the closing bell today, the Dow Jones Industrial Average fell 25.20 to end at 13,207.27. The tech-heavy Nasdaq gained nearly 5 points to close at 2,601.01, while the S&P 500 fell almost 2 points to close at 1,453. In the fixed income market, U.S. Treasury bonds rallied on increased demand for safe assets. S&P's rating services downgraded its rating for ACA Financial Guarantee Corps to CCC from an investment grade of an A rating. The benchmark 10-year Treasury note rose with its yield at 4.06%, down from 4.12% late yesterday. The 30-year bond climbed with its yield at 4.48%, down from 4.54% yesterday.
and the two-year note gained with its yield at 3.18%. In energy, futures prices gained on the session. The latest petroleum supply data from the EIA showed that crude and heating oil fell sharply last week, while gasoline inventories rose. In its weekly uh, report, the Energy Department's EIA said crude supplies fell by 7.6 million barrels. Crude prices gained on the report and ended the session up by $1.16 at $91.24 a barrel. The EIA also reported that heating oil supplies fell by 2.1 million barrels last week, while gasoline inventories spiked 3 million barrels. At the close on the NYMEX, January gas rose 2.76 cents to settle at $2.33.19 a gallon. January heating oil rose 4.25 cents to end the session at $2.59.79 a gallon. Meanwhile, January nat gas futures rose 3.8 cents, closing at $7.179 per million BTU. Over in the metals complex, gold futures ended with a slight loss on the day. In the session, the U.S. dollar saw strength versus the majors, reducing demand for the precious metal. February gold ended down $2 at 805.40 an ounce. In other metals, March silver was up 5.7 cents, closing at $14.22 an ounce. Meanwhile, March copper ended up by 7.35 cents at $2.9480 a pound. This afternoon, we're joined by Bobby Firestone, analyst at Elrond Trading. He'll recap today's session in energy and metals and also give us his short-term outlook. Even with today's rather bullish crude inventory number, the market still looks rather confused. Uh, the inventories came out down 7.6 million barrels today for the crude, up 3 million for the unleaded, down 2.1 on the distillates. But really, when all said and done, well, the market didn't have just that insane bull day that a lot of people were hoping for. Market looks like it doesn't know where it wants to go. It's trading like it doesn't want know where it wants to go. So it doesn't know where it wants to go. And I think we're going to be stuck here for crude oil. We're going to maybe see highs 94, maybe try and make another push to 95. But in the grand scheme of things, until we see some sort of a large scale shift, we're going to see the market just trade here in a five to ten dollar range. So crude oil. Not a lot going on. There's going to be some good interday swings if you're a day trader, but for a position basis, I'm not looking for anything there. Natural gas, on the other hand, looks like it could be setting up to make the next push higher. Now, we're trading, we've been trading at the lowest levels in a long time. We have inventories coming out tomorrow, and uh, yeah, the inventory is going to come out saying, okay, we have a lot of, there's a lot of natural gas. We're above the five year average. We're very close to last year's level. So it's going to be the same type of inventory report we've seen all season so far. But the price level is different. We're seeing we're low prices. For the last couple of days, we've been seeing slightly, we've been seeing higher lows and slightly higher highs. So I, what I'm looking for tomorrow, it has to take out 730, and no doubt about it. We need to see get above 730, close above 730. My ideal target to start really getting bullish is 750. Above 750, I think it's really kicked off the next move higher. That was Bobby Firestone, analyst at Aleron Trading, with his commodities commentary. And that's it for today's edition of PM Exchange. I'm Remy Hokey. Join us tomorrow morning for your latest news update right here on ForexTV.com. Have a good night.